What's up everyone, my name is Isaac and today I am creating a tier list of different programming side hustles that one can do. So we are putting a bunch of different programming side hustles head to head here to see which one is cracked and absolutely golted and which one belongs down here in the F tier. So uh, jumping right in, we can do a checkup on the actual competition we have. So starting off in the left corner, we have Mr. Anonymous right here. He is representing bug bounty hunting. Then we got the ship fast stack representing creating a SaaS product that live on the internet. Then we have this gentleman right here representing creating a YouTube channel and posting videos about programming. Then we have the good old doodle jump on an old iPhone 4, I think this is, representing the app development sphere over here. Then we got game development. We got, uh, what did I think this was? This is freelance work. Uh, as you can see, this dude is doing at the cafe. Then we have doing a hardware project and selling stuff. Then we have technical writing and blogging. And uh, the, <laughs> I just have a picture of the Medium logo. Then we have uh, creating <laughs> coding merch and selling that. Or e-commerce in general is what I think I was thinking here. And lastly, down in the bottom right corner, we have open source development. So starting right off, I think we can go ahead and cover. You now what? Let's start with freelance work. So I think this is a pretty viable side hustle. If you are looking to make some cash on the side and you have the technical abilities as a programmer. I don't know, there are a bunch of sites like Upwork and Fiverr even and uh, ways you can find clients. And I have actually built a website as a freelance project myself back in 2019 before I had landed a professional job as a developer. So this is something I think is very viable. Now, the problem with this is that this does not scale very well. So I think you're going to reach your cap in how much you can make. And also this is kind of time consuming. So taking that into account, I think this belongs, you know what? I think this belongs in the C tier simply because it's very time consuming and um, I guess I haven't said what the metric here is. I don't necessarily only think about money, but just how much enjoyment you are going to get from doing any of these side hustles on uh, your free time. And I think especially if you already have a nine to five job as a developer, then going home and grinding out even more work for someone else doesn't sound too fun to me. So this belongs in the C tier. Now let's jump into the next one, which we can do blogging, I think. So I think this is also a C tier item. And I think this is actually going to go in front of freelance development simply because uh, writing stuff can be kind of chill. It's fun, I think. And uh, you learn some super valuable skills along the way. I actually have a blog myself. And uh, even though this makes zero money, I think it's fun uh, trying to write some stuff. And you can see here that my styling on the cold blocks is completely broken. So I kind of have to... Um, Fix this, I realize now. But uh, there are platforms like uh, Medium, the one I have here, that actually pays out to the writers. Taking a look at this Stripe dashboard, you can see that from Medium that I have actually made a whopping 2,000 Norwegian kroners, which in dollars are around $200. And that's basically from two articles that popped off and got uh, a couple of... Uh, thousand readers i think one had fifteen thousand one had maybe a little bit more and uh, yeah they actually paid out really nicely a couple of years ago now 
I think that have changed and they don't pay as much now, but uh, definitely something to consider. And some companies like DigitalOcean even pay out just a single amount if you write a post for them. So I know DigitalOcean paid out, I think, 200 bucks for every blog post if they get accepted. So that's um, some real money and you, you don't have to spend too long writing to make something good, I think. So that was writing. Next up, let's take a look at app development. Okay, so with app development compared to something like freelance work, I think the potential for creating something big that you can uh, profit off of is a lot uh, higher. So immediately, I think this is B or maybe even A tier territory. Now, the problem with app development is that it is kind of difficult, especially as a solo developer. I think you are not going to find a bunch of profitable apps on the App Store that's created only by a single uh, person, but there are definitely some um, cases of this. And I have actually found out a crazy hack on uh, the best type of app to create if you are just looking for a money grab, and that is the world of drinking game applications, because who is easier to sell to than a drunk person? So knowing this, I think uh, app development can actually be a kind of reliable way of making money. And if you're interested, I have a video on this channel where I cover a drinking game app that I made myself and it is removed from the app store now simply because it didn't age very well, but I managed to make some decent money on it. And uh, yeah, I can recommend it to anyone else looking for a fun side project. And also I have to say app development is actually super fun. So this is something I really enjoy doing. Next up, we can take a look at software as a service. So what I'm thinking here is any sort of project that lives on the internet that is connected to something like Stripe or Lemon Squeezy. And uh, yeah, you can sell stuff super, uh, super easily and uh, reach a ton of people. So those are definitely positives. Also, to me, web development is kind of fun now. Is the market sort of saturated? I think so, especially after vibe coding has become such a viable option for creating uh, shitty versions of things. I mean, I feel like everywhere you look on the internet, there are some shitty vibe coded side trying to sell you something for 20 bucks. So um, sort of boring. I'm not sure how fulfilling creating just another uh, ChatGPT wrapper really is, but uh, you know what? I think it can be kind of fun just because uh, the barrier of entry is set so low. I think uh, yeah, creating another next app is um, kind of an enjoyable process. Now, for me, I have no idea what a good SaaS project uh, would be. I've tried coming up with some ideas before, but I don't know. I think the idea generation here is probably the most difficult part but if you have a great idea then hey let me know in the comments okay now let's try to hit some heavy hitters here we can do bug bounty hunting so if you're not familiar bug bounty hunting is the process of hacking websites and companies essentially and letting them know that you have found a vulnerability and giving a nice report and in return uh, a bunch of companies actually pay out pretty decently for this so a lot of people use someone like bug crowd or hacker one i think they are called as sort of a middleman and uh, yeah i've actually spoken to a bug bounty hunter in real life once and he said that he was raking in uh, like 200k dollars a year pretty easily and not sure if this was true or if he was just flexing but uh, dude also the idea of being a hacker i mean it sounds pretty sick although i know very little of uh, cyber security but uh, i don't know just uh, looking at uh, this crazy dude right here I think this has to go in the A tier and I think this has to be even above app development. So right here, this is for sure something I would like to learn in the future. 
So yeah, stick around for that if you are uh, hyped on it. Okay, next up, let's do creating videos on YouTube. And you might be thinking uh, this is not a programming side project, but you can make a programming related YouTube channel just like I have. And uh, I have to say, it's very, very enjoyable. So for me, I just really like the process of creating videos, filming, editing, everything like that. And uh, yeah, I have created some programming projects simply because I wanted to create some videos. So that's super nice. And uh, like this, I think this was a live stream and even doing stuff like that has been kind of enjoyable, although a bit stressful, I have to say. But uh, also in the long run, I think this can scale pretty well. And if you remember from May this year, I actually had a sponsor deal with Brilliant and it paid <laughs> almost more than I would expect. So definitely some money to be made. And also it's super nice to have just some small YouTubers out there creating stuff. I'm not talking about myself, but there are a bunch of other people that I really enjoy watching. And uh, yeah, I like uh, that YouTube is sort of a calm and uh, personal space to be in. So I think YouTube channel has to go at the top of the B tier for this. It's just very enjoyable, not really programming related, but still something I would recommend to anyone watching this. Give it a go. Okay, we have a four more left. Let's see, maybe we can do e-commerce. Okay, so <laughs> e-commerce, this goes straight into the F tier. <laughs> And that is speaking from personal experience because back in my student days, I actually created a e-commerce business with my friend Gerard, where we tried to sell some computer mice just like this. The idea was very simple. I really wanted this mouse, but they were no longer in production. So to buy them, I had to buy an entire production line of them, which was 500. So me and Gerard, we bought 500 of these mice with water and oil inside it. And the problem is all of the water leaked out. So we could only sell like uh, some, of the, some of the stock. We couldn't sell everything and uh, yeah, even though uh, the process of uh, creating a website uh, with payment and stuff has been fun. And also this is a picture of uh, all the boxes we got. It was 60 kilos of computer mice. Uh, I have to say it was <laughs> sort of stressful and uh, we had in-person deliveries biking around and I don't know. I don't think this is uh, the best project to do if you like programming. This seems like too much of a hassle and uh, it's too stressful. And also the entry level, you got to have a bunch of cash that you're willing to <laughs> lose. So yeah, not recommended. Okay, next up we have game development. And this, ladies and gentlemen, goes straight into the cracked and absolutely goated tier. Yep. This is true. So I have um, I have actually tried creating some games myself and I have to say it is such an enjoyable process. For me at least that really makes programming feel like a hobby and uh, also just seeing the amount of crazy stuff that are created online is just an endless source of inspiration for this. So even though you create a game that nobody plays, I still think this has such an uh, artistic value that uh, it must be very fulfilling creating something like this. Uh, also, maybe you end up creating the next Minecraft and uh, sell it to Microsoft for a quadrillion dollars. That's also a potential upside on this. Okay, next to last, we have hardware projects. So. This screenshot is actually from a dude documenting his uh, hardware project on YouTube, Ash TF, and he is creating this super sick productivity writing uh, sort of device. I would recommend going out and checking out his channel where he logs it. And I have to say, I've been enjoying watching this series so much that I'm almost inspired to create something myself, <laughs> although I have no idea where to start. So massive respect to those doing stuff like this. I think um, it's probably very, very difficult to create stuff, especially when you have to 
actually start producing things, which I think pulls this down, but just creating something in the physical world seems super sick. So I think this goes in front of a SaaS and still behind creating YouTube videos because I don't know, YouTube is so fun. Okay, then we are on to the last thing here, which is open source development. And I know we all on the internet really like uh, the open source people out there, so shout out to them. But being invested in an open source project almost seems like hell. And uh, I don't know, there, there have been stories uh, in the past couple of years, probably longer, of uh, super toxic communities and just that open source in general is just a speedrun on getting burnt out. And you can see it by how much people, by how much the open source developers out there are committing. And also, I know some people make some money on open source development through GitHub sponsors and stuff like that, but compared to how much work there is, I think this has to be a C tier thing. So open source work, I mean, it can be super fun and fulfilling, but if we compare it to the other things on this list, I would try to yeah, just make stuff I enjoy and create the next Minecraft. So let me know what you have thought of this tier list. Am I completely off here? Do you have any other cool side hustles that uh, should have made the list? Let me know in the comments and uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, subscribe to the channel for more coding videos. Pow.